Story 1. My glasses broke in fourth grade. It was manageable because I sat pretty close to the front. My teacher asked me several times when I was getting new ones, and all I could say was, I don't know. One day, she moved me to the back of the room. Could not see the board from back there. She stopped saying what to do out loud and told us the problems we needed to do were on the board. Told the girl next to me she better not tell me what the board said. If I wanted to know, my parents needed to get me new glasses. I'd try to sharpen a pencil or get a tissue or something so I could sneak a look. The girl next to me would write down what it said on the board and slip it to me. That way I know what math problems to do or what pages to read. I was 10. I couldn't force my parents to get me new glasses. Money was tight. She was an awful teacher. Once, a girl slammed my fingers on a desk on purpose. She saw it and ignored it. I was a good kid. I never got in trouble and was always well behaved. I don't know why she had it out for me. Story 2. My school was really violent. I got slapped in the face in first grade by the teacher for mouthing off. I sure did afterward. Called her a bitch. Got sent to the principal's office. We had one teacher who had a pedal with screw tips that stuck out about a quarter inch. Same teacher would also make you put your head up against a concrete wall if you refused the screw tip paddle. So the regular paddle would hit you, then you'd smash the top of your head into the wall. Your choice. One teacher slammed a student kidney first into the eraser shelf on the chalkboard. A principal, who was 6 foot 7, picked a friend of mine, who was about 5 foot 6 and 140 pounds, by the collar of his shirt and smashed his head repeatedly, five or six times, into the concrete wall above the door jamb. Lots of fighting in class, a stabbing or two, and the occasional gun. Fun times in rural late 80s Ohio. Story 3. I had two moments that were pretty horrible at the time they happened. I struggled to rate one higher than the other. The first one happened when I was in 7th grade. There was this teacher I really admired. He got along great with the students and would always say funny stuff. One time, he got us all good with a joke, and I was laughing pretty hard. He just looked confused for a second and told me that my laugh was really weird. He asked me why I laughed like that. I was only a little taken aback at first, but it really hit me when I got home. It hurt and I ended up consciously thinking about the way I respond to jokes and the like, and ended up changing the way I laughed. It doesn't bother me at all now, and in a sense, not having an atypical laugh prevents some similar socially awkward situations like that from happening again. So I guess it wasn't all bad. The second time was in high school. I had a B average in an English class, and I wanted to apply for an advanced track of English for my next year, AP Literature. Taking these courses is helpful for college, in the sense that it boosts your high school GPA and lets you skip college coursework. This requires a teacher recommendation. So I talked about it to my teacher, and he told me he wouldn't give it to me. When I asked why, the requirement for a recommendation is a B- minimum, so I met it. He point-blank told me I wouldn't make it in the class. He point-blank told me I wouldn't make it in the class. I asked if there was anything that I could do that could change his mind. He told me that I would need to get an A in his class, but more importantly that he doubted that I was smart enough to do so. That pissed me off, so I told him I would do just that. I worked my ass off and bent over backwards. His grading was generally pretty unfair and opinionated, but since a lot of the work was peer-reviewed essays and worksheets with a lot of fixed answers, it just took a lot more time and effort than I was originally putting into his class rather than being smarter or whatever. If he tried to shoot down something I wrote in an essay, I would fight tooth and nail until he could either provide an actual reason for why I lost points, or he relented and gave me back my points. About a week before the final recommendation deadline for the advanced placement class I was trying to get into, I had a 96% in his class, which was an A-plus on his rubric. It had been about three or four months since our deal. I went up and asked him about the recommendation and he acted oblivious and tried to gaslight me into thinking we never made a promise like that. I ended up not getting into this advanced class, and it cost me later down the line when I was bogged down with way more coursework than I needed to do in college. Despite my frustration at the situation, me and my parents were really naive at the time, and didn't realize that we should have escalated the issue and brought it to the attention of my school administration. I am a child of immigrant parents, so they didn't really know what avenues there were for resolving issues like this. 
In retrospect, I should have been more cool-headed and tried to fix what went wrong, but I ended up being caught up in resentment and became very self-defeating about it all. Story 4. My dad died at the beginning of my junior year of high school, but he was in a coma for two weeks before he finally died. He lived a few hours away, so we were planning on driving down there and staying for a little while to try to convince his family to pull the plug. He was never going to survive. My mom typed a letter explaining everything for me to take to school and give to my teacher so I could keep up with my work. Every teacher told me just to not worry about work right now and that we'd figure it out later. But my bitch of a math teacher. She read the note, sighed, then looked at me super annoyed and said, You kids really need to figure this stuff out sooner and give us a heads up, because I can't just come up with work. Okay, well next time my dad decides to die, I'll make sure he gives me a week's notice first. Maybe not the worst, but it really stuck with me. Story 5. My golf instructor called me a in front of the whole class. I got up to use the bathroom, but the men's room was locked, so I knocked and then went and used an empty women's room. I was 9 years old and probably would have had an accident if I didn't go right away. But when I walked out of that women's bathroom, the teacher was right there outside the door to scream at me. He had security with him and made a big scene out of it. When we both went back to the group, he told the rest of the golf class that I was a pervert and liked to use the ladies' room so I could watch girls pee. Of course, everybody laughed. I was so embarrassed, I told my parents I wasn't going back and to tell my grandfather I was sorry that I wasn't going to use the clubs or the lessons he bought me. I never told them why until my wife brought it up over a birthday dinner at their house a couple of years ago. I'm over it now, but as a kid, it bothered me for years. Story 6. My math teacher senior year was talking about my friend and how dumb she was to the other students in my class who didn't like the girl and were always picking on her. I stopped the teacher in the middle of the conversation and told her I was going to fight her on my last day of school, even if it meant I couldn't walk at graduation. She got pregnant right at the end of the year, so I obviously couldn't. Years later, the teacher's mother-in-law came into my place of work. She gave me her last name, and I asked if she knew the teacher, and her face went sour. I told her I hated her, and we bonded over how awful she was. Also, a history teacher choked out a kid in the hallway, in that same high school. Story 7. Well, coming from experience, and this was horrifying to see as a kid. I had this third grade teacher. Where I'm from, you have one from first to fourth grade, plus a few that teach you some languages maybe, and a sports teacher, but you have the main one. Besides the fact that she used to beat the shit out of us, we had a bully. He was a bad kid. Well, one day, she got some guys from the class and had them restrain him to a table and beat him. This image still haunts me, even now. No matter what that poor kid did, he didn't deserve that. He was just a kid. Some teachers really are f***ed in the head. TLDR. Evil teacher restrained the bully to a table and had some guys beat him very badly. No one deserves something like this, and it's a haunting memory. Not even a bully deserves this. He needs to be taught, not beaten. Story 8. Middle school history class. My family was homeless and moved around a lot while my parents tried their damnedest to find a solid spot to land. Basically made homework and studying really f***ing hard especially having no light in a tent. One time, I was in a position to crush it and bring my grades back up. I had a history exam coming up and went hard on studying. On the day of the test, my mom surprised me at school with McDonald's for lunch. This was a huge expense and a good luck hug. I felt like I breezed through it, knew all the answers, and nailed it. When the test came back, every single question was marked wrong, just a sea of red. I thought, there's no way I got every single thing wrong, so I took it to the teacher's assistant and asked him to double check. He found I mostly aced it and told the teacher. She said, that little shit isn't going anywhere in life, I'm not changing his grade. I have no idea why she even called me a little shit. I was a quiet kid, never caused trouble, and tried hard when I had the means. She was just used to seeing my lower grades and decided I wasn't worth any effort. Story 9 the P.E. teacher at my high school got arrested right after lunch during my senior year because the principal found the sex tape she made with one of the girls on the volleyball team. The new band director gave me a 15-minute lecture in front of the entire band because I was goofing off during band camp. He gave us a 20-minute break, 
So I used it to talk to my friends. And when I started crying during his lecture, he said I deserved it for not being good enough. Then got mad at me for dropping out of band. Found out later that he was only mad because I was the only white trombone player. Previous band director would cuss me out and call me useless or worthless for being a foreigner. My family moved to a small town from the other side of the country when I was a kid, and even though a lot of locals love us, a few of them hate us for coming from so far away. History teacher would stand me up in front of the entire class whenever I answered a question wrong and would encourage my classmates to laugh at me and make fun of me for being stupid. I'm good with history. I just had trouble learning the way she was teaching it. I'm better at learning when I can do it at my own pace and go down whatever rabbit holes I want to. Science teacher got a 12-year-old girl pregnant, then tried to get her kicked out of school unless she got an abortion. Story 10. Well, there was the time in third grade I asked to go to the office because I felt sick and got told to sit down and be quiet. This happened several times, and at some point, I fell asleep. When school was over, I blacked out while walking to the car. My temperature was 106.4, so almost killing me probably rates pretty high on the worst thing. Then there was the time a single teacher decided to single me out as a troubled kid and found reasons to have me sent to the office or suspended over and over. Throughout my time in school, I was never suspended, removed from class, or sent to the office by another teacher. This one was responsible for me being suspended 50 plus days that year. Bonus bit, her husband was later murdered in a drug deal in which he was selling meth. Turns out my friend's dad knew him in college, and the dude had always been a drug dealer. But me, the kid with longer hair and a tendency to wear black, was somehow a problem for her. It's been ages, and I still hate that woman. Story 11. Not as bad as some things I know, but it was pretty messed up when my 7th grade teacher berated me and told me I'd never amount to anything for the unforgivable sin of mislabeling an assignment that was late because I had mono. He was yelling in my face, saying he knew my type. Someone who worked their ass off to get homework done while still sick? I laughed it off at the time, but years later I realized I did stop trying hard after that. Because why bother if I wasn't going to accomplish anything anyway? Story 12 I was an extremely shy child with really low self-esteem. The one thing I was proud of, or thought I had any talent in, was art. When my very small school announced an after-school art club, I was very excited to sign up. There were a limited number of openings, and the teacher announced students who were the most talented out of the sign-ups would be the one selected to join the club. I was devastated when I wasn't picked, and it made me doubt myself for years. It wasn't until I was older that I realized that all the kids chosen for every after-school club, art, choir, etc., were conveniently teachers' kids. Teachers, who would have needed after-school care for their children. It wasn't something that was done intentionally to me, but I'm still salty about how it made me feel for years afterward. Story 13. These are more on the mild side of things, but even as an adult, I think they're really odd to the point where I wouldn't trust their judgment generally. Seventh grade, math teacher. He pulled me into an empty classroom and screamed at me for not being enthusiastic enough about math, actually yelling at me. It might have only been about 10 minutes of this, but it felt like much longer. I wasn't the kind of kid who acted up in class, despite my ADHD. While it's true I wasn't that enthusiastic about the subject, that was uncalled for at the very least. I can't recall if this was 7th or 8th grade, but my parents had recently gotten divorced, and my new Spanish teacher decided that my dad was the ultimate catch after meeting him at some school thing. She would not stop asking me about him. This was my 8th grade drama teacher, and it was one of my favorite subjects. He asked me to help him cast the middle school musical. I agreed, but later pulled out after it got really uncomfortable with my classmates for obvious reasons. He yelled at me for being flaky. I told him I didn't think it was ethical. At the end of the year, he gave out awards for the musical, and literally gave one to every student but me. Fuck you, Mr. Hitzelberger. Story 14. Not really a school teacher, but the school nurse. In 8th grade, I was diagnosed with Chiari malformation in April, and I was going to graduate in May. Doctors scheduled surgery in June instead of May so I could graduate. With Chiari malformation, I got really bad headaches. 
One day I went into the nurse's office saying I had a bad headache and I wanted medication. That day we had a practice SAT test, so the nurses told me I was fine and just nervous for the test. I said, no, I really don't feel good. It's just a practice test, whether I do really good or horrendous. It won't affect my grades. I just want some medicine. She kept insisting that I was fine. Until my mom came in crying to the school. I had texted her because she said I should have scheduled surgery in May instead of June. Who cares about walking across the stage as long as I got my diploma, blah, blah, blah. Then the nurse saw and said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. Yes, please go home and take some medicine. But about a week after, I went back to the nurse's office and she did the same thing, told me I was fine. Story 15. I was 16 when a teacher pushed me backwards in my chair and squatted over me with his fist cocked back, threatening to punch me in the face. I was a head, but that was over the top. I was so surprised that all I could do was laugh in his face. I went about a day after that, but some other students told the principal and the teacher was forced to go to anger management. For the next couple years, every time I saw him in the hallway, he stopped me and apologized. Apparently, when he threatened me, his wife was in the process of leaving him for being an alcoholic. Then that following summer, he got sober and found God. Honestly, I have no hard feelings, and I'm glad he's doing better. Story 16. We were on an elementary school trip. I think I was in the second or third grade, so way shorter than my teacher. I had to look up to her while she was explaining the daily schedule. The sunlight wasn't directly hitting my eyes, so I started squinting, thinking it'd be disrespectful to look away when the teacher is talking. Our eyes met, and she shouted, Don't look at me like that, you little brat. You think the world revolves around you? It was such a weird, confusing, and hurtful comment that even after being called a useless butt by the high school principal in front of the morning assembly, this was the one incident that stuck with me well into adulthood. Story 17 had a teacher in high school who was a huge gossip, would literally spend half of class just chit-chatting with students, which no one complained about. Anyway, my senior year, I asked the prettiest girl in school to go to prom with me. She said yes. She was a very goody two-shoes type of girl, the type to go to church every Sunday and say gosh darn it. I was, and still am, very much the opposite. Not that I've ever been in any serious trouble, I was so psyched to go to prom with this girl, as I had a huge crush on her. I thought that with a night out with her, I could get her to know me better and charm her. It had always worked for me in the past. Word got back to our teacher that we were going together. A friend of mine was in my date's class with this teacher. A week or so before prom, he reported to me that the teacher told my date something to the effect of, just be careful with him, he's going to try and have sex with you. Easily the most up thing I've ever had a teacher say about me. Just so f***ing inappropriate. Of course, prom was awkward. It went fine, but there was always a bit of standoffishness, which has never been the case for men with women. I obviously never had any intention of sleeping with this girl on prom night. I knew who she was. I just wanted to maybe get her to really like me. But this gossipy bitch of a math teacher torpedoed any chances of that. So f up. Story 1. In high school, they would do trivia questions after the announcement sometimes, and the first teacher who dialed the office with the correct answer would get a prize for the class. My math teacher really wanted to win, and hadn't yet this year. So one fateful morning, the question went out, and we had the answer, so he called in, but we were the second caller. In a fit of pseudo-rage, he yells, damn it, and kicks this little plastic trash can across the room, where it bonks a kid right in the head. His eyes go wide, and he apologizes and asks if the kid is okay, which he is. Everyone got a good laugh afterwards, including the kid who got hit, and later we would pretend to duck whenever we didn't win the morning trivia contests. Story 2 I had a history teacher in high school who was always stern and serious, which was great since it gave a reverence to what he was teaching about and his unpretentious nature meant he spoke about what was important and interesting. One day, however, his voice broke, and after he cleared his throat, it broke again. He stopped talking, put his hands in his pockets, frowned, and took a few breaths. Students, sorry about this lecture. My wife and I just decided to get a divorce. He blankly stared ahead for a second and then walked toward the door, loosening his tie. I need a drink. He exited the door. 
After a second, he poked his head back in. Of water. I'm coming back. Don't think I've forgotten about Napoleon. Not too much of a meltdown, but he was a pretty manly dude in a nerdy sort of way. Story 3. Our freshman English teacher was a small, soft-spoken woman who was kind of known to be a teacher you could walk all over with little repercussions. We were in a review session after school, and some upperclassmen were just hanging out in the hallways making lots of noise, so she was constantly poking her head out in the hall asking them to be quiet. As we are all very silently reading or something, the classroom door absolutely slammed shut, so hard the latch didn't have time to catch and the door bounced back open. The teacher immediately yells, oh hell no, and kicks off her heels and takes off out the door. She caught up with the kid, who had taken a running start and kicked the door shut, and berated him for a good 10 minutes, which we could hear clear as day from the end of the hall. It was like nothing we'd ever heard from her. Story 4. I was in a band. One day, one of the regular always in trouble disruptive students was being extra disruptive while the director was trying to tell us something important. So after about five different times of going the normal route to get him to settle down, he cracked. It got quiet, and then the director bellowed, William, are you stupid or just don't give a crap? The whole room was quiet. All eyes were now on the disruptive kid who was then trying to hide behind his tuba. Then, the director continued with his announcement like nothing happened. Story 5. My super dorky history teacher in 8th grade was the nicest teacher I've ever met. But there were a couple class clowns in our class, and he usually dealt with them okay. One day, though, they were obnoxious to the entire class from the moment he walked in, and he snapped, yelling and chucking his stapler across the room. He nailed a staple right into Ben Franklin's forehead. He immediately apologized and went about his day normally, while all the students went silent. Nobody ever bothered him again after that day. Story 6 A Spanish teacher I had in high school ended up having a meltdown on the day of the final exam. The whole semester, my class had been pretty chatty, but really nothing that out of the ordinary. On the day of the final, there was an event that set her off. If I remember correctly, he was talking during the exam. His cell phone may have gone off instead. It's been a while. She proceeded to attempt to pick up the desk with a 17-year-old sitting in it and slam it on the ground. The kid got up, and then she flung the desk along the floor, slamming it against the door, and told him to finish his exam outside. Then she proceeded to tell the rest of us what terrible people and students we were. She also told us that she had gained 20 pounds over the course of the semester because of how bad our class was. Then she felt the need to tell us about how she'd been raped as she broke down sobbing. After that, I just did my best to finish my exam as quickly as possible so that I could go home, as that was my last class of the year before summer. Story 7. Junior year of high school, I decided to take a psychology class. The administration switched a lot of teachers around that year and hired a lot of new ones too, so I didn't know anything about him. As the semester goes on, his behavior starts slipping, and the class starts noticing. He begins to lose his patience more and more frequently when the class doesn't respond to a question immediately. His behavior then progressed to him throwing whiteboard markers at students for not paying attention or answering incorrectly. Then one day, about half the way into the semester, he completely loses it. A group of three students laughed at something within their own conversation just as class was starting and our teacher saw and made a comment to the class that if we weren't going to listen, he would make today hell. Some kids spoke up, saying he would go to the principal if he did anything to hurt the class. So the teacher began throwing markers, erasers, anything he could find at the student. The student got up to leave for the principals, and the teacher stood up on his desk and screamed at us. He ran to the front of the classroom, where the student who spoke out was, picked up a desk and threw it at the student. Thankfully, it didn't hit him, but the teacher ran to the door to prevent anyone from leaving and said if anyone said anything about that day to anyone, he would ruin their lives. Some friends and I told the principal and administration, and I actually had to go into court to testify. Turns out, the guy suffers from schizophrenia as well as some degree of PTSD after serving in the military. I don't remember what ended up happening with him. At the time, I really didn't care to know. Bummer. I really wanted to hear this end with something like, at the end of the semester he tied his erratic behavior to a lesson plan. Some kind of dead poet society or something. We had a physics teacher in 11th grade that fake reversed graded the first big exam. 
All the smart kids did bad, didn't understand why, and the couple broke down. He quickly blended that into the next lesson and handed out the proper grades at the end of the class. Was a total mind F. Story 8. Junior year in university, my genetics professor was in the middle of a lecture when authorities took him out of the auditorium, thank goodness, and informed him that his wife, the dean of our college, had been struck and killed by a motor vehicle that morning. He retreated to his office and proceeded to tear the place apart like a tornado had gone through it. He ripped the top of his desk off its frame, pulled down all of his bookcases, books, pages, papers, all sorts of documents and furniture strewn everywhere in pieces. By the time I graduated, he still wasn't the same man as he was before that awful day. Story 9. This was in high school. We had a band teacher. His nickname was Pinky because he had very red hair and pale skin with a red tint. Borderline albino. Every time he got mad, his entire face turned tomato red. I don't remember the sequence of events, but he was already frustrated. Everyone in the room knew to shut up so that we didn't piss him off. Well, everyone except this one dippy girl. She asked something along the lines of, Are you mad? And kept pestering him. He finally snapped. His face turned that familiar shade of tomato red, and he threw the pencil he was using to conduct across the room. He then stormed out and slammed the door hard enough that it could be heard on the other side of the building. He quit soon after. Story 10. Year 9 Math Class. Our teacher was sick and an early 20s substitute teacher came in to cover. She was lovely, kind, friendly, although a bit timid and shy. One girl in our class used a fountain pen to flick ink on a shirt she was wearing one day. Poor woman noticed her do it, didn't say a word, and just went to her desk, put her head in her hands, and sobbed. Didn't even move for ten minutes at least. Eventually, a friend of mine went to get another teacher. The sub was escorted out, still crying, and was seen for the rest of the day just crying in her car, not moving for another four or so hours. Story 11. Eighth grade math teacher. He was well known for his short temper, but this particular day was bad. There was a kid in my class, Justin, that never listened and never did his homework. One day, the math teacher just had it with Justin, grabbed his desk with him in it, and picked it up and slammed it back down on the ground a few times. After that, he shoved the desk with Justin in it across the room. Justin was fine, thankfully, but the math teacher just stormed out. Told my mom, and I guess a few other parents called the school about it too. He was gone for a few weeks and had to take anger management classes. I just went by my old middle school a few weeks ago, and he's the assistant principal now. Who would have expected that? Story 12. In high school, our government teacher freaked out on my class. We had a few talkers in the back corner, but they finally broke him. He flipped his podium lectern over and started screaming at us. He called us the worst group of kids he'd ever had to teach and that he was 110% accurate that we were going to be nothing. He then went to his desk and drank his entire thermos of coffee. A few years later, he was having a retirement party at his house. I was close friends with his son. He revealed that the thermos was 80% vodka and 20% coffee. Story 13. Had a sub in 5th grade. I was a really unorganized kid, and having to dig through my desk for crap wasn't uncommon. Sub went to collect our homework one by one, and I was still digging through, pulling a bunch of stuff out when she got to me. She started towering over me and told me this was unacceptable, dumped my desk in front of me and told me I was staying in from recess to organize it. One girl said, you can't make him do that, and the sub raised her voice and spit out, you don't tell me what to do, brat. I can do whatever I want. The whole class revolted, and a neighboring teacher came in to see what was up. The sub claimed I was being lippy, and this was my punishment. Then the whole class spoke up and informed him of what really happened, and we were all let out for recess. Came back in, and a lunch lady was sitting at the teacher's desk instead. As the kid who was always picked on by everyone, it was nice to see the whole class stand up for me that day. Story 14. I taught public high school for seven years and have been teaching in a university ever since. Every time one of these threads pops up, I expect to find the story of how I once broke down in tears when a cell phone rang in class. 
or the time I threw up in a trash can, brushed my teeth with bottled water in front of all 42 students, asked a janitor to come down and take the trash out, and went back to teaching after my favorite student of all time faked barfing noises because he knew it would make me puke. Story 15. My junior year in nursing school, we took a nursing psych class. The professor was not a good teacher, to put it lightly. She regularly would talk about her personal life instead of teaching what was outlined on the syllabus. About halfway through the course, we had our midterm exam, which consisted of about 75% of questions of stuff we had not covered in class. I think the highest grade anyone got was a 65%. The next class, she berated us and told us all we were going to be bad nurses. One of the people in my class wrote a letter to her, saying that she spends most of the classes not teaching the material and it's not justifiable to give us exams if we know more about her personal life than what we are supposed to be taught, citing the syllabus given to us at the beginning of the semester. All of us in the course signed the letter. Next class, she absolutely lost it on us, screaming at us about how disrespectful we are and how we will never amount to anything. This got to the point that the dean of the nursing program heard her from down the hall and had to come remove her from the classroom. Next class, we had another professor for the rest of the semester. The dean told us she was on hiatus and said that we brought up our grievances in a respectful manner and commended us on that. The professor who broke down never came back to teach at the school. Story 16. I was bullied a lot around this time, and I started fighting back against the bullies. The teacher noticed this and thought it'd be a good idea to remove me and who is essentially my arch nemesis from the playground during lunch and make us do crafts in a classroom instead. I think they were trying to make us get along by working together, but that doesn't happen with 11-year-olds. Unsupervised for a whole hour in a locked classroom. She leaves, and when she returns halfway through the hour, the classroom is a mess, chairs strewn everywhere, our school jumpers and shirts are torn. I had a bleeding ear and he had a swollen lip and bruises everywhere. We freeze as soon as she catches us, and she just collapses to the ground. She sobbed into her hands. All I wanted was for you to be friends. Was that so much to ask? She wept uncontrollably for the next five minutes. We felt awful about it. We shook hands and tried to clean up the classroom. The next day, we had a substitute teacher, who eventually became our permanent one. And he was horrible. I guess it worked, though. It's 16 years later, and I'm on the way to my enemy's house to drink and play board games. So, yeah. Story 17. My 8th grade algebra teacher, also German teacher, Mr. Cogburn, was an interesting guy. He was tall, had kind of wild-looking frizzy gray hair and a beard, and had a sort of boisterous, larger-than-life kind of personality. He started every single class by slamming the door and yelling. He yelled, or as I would realize once I got into theater in high school, he projected, through the entire class period, though he never really came across as intimidating. He always had a yardstick in his hand that he would slap forcefully against the blackboard to emphasize what he was saying. He would also slap it against the desks of students who weren't paying attention. Though he was exceedingly careful to not actually hit the student, it wasn't terribly uncommon for him to break yardsticks, and there was always another one in the supply cabinet to replace the one he'd broken. He had a little song slash chant he made up for remembering the slope-intercept form of an equation for a line that I will probably remember until the day I die. He also gave the most effective, and to 8th graders both hilarious and embarrassing, explanation of how to divide fractions. He stood on a desk and told us, Always divide the top. He pointed at his head. By the bottom. He then turned around and pointed at his own Never divide the bottom because the bottom, here he helpfully gestured up and down the length of his ass, is already divided. That's what Mr. Cogburn was like. He was big and loud and crazy, but not in a scary way. We told new students that the way to tell he was actually mad was if he started the class by shutting the door like a normal person and speaking quietly. And that was when they should be scared. Now we get to the story of the meltdown. Every year, our school did an event called the Mathathon. Students were given math worksheets and tried to solve as many problems as they could in a set amount of time. People, usually the parents, would sponsor the students, pledging a certain amount of money for each problem correctly solved. 
and at the end, the money was donated to a local charity that helps the disabled. It was that time of year, and Mr. Cogburn was explaining the mathathon to my class. And when he got to the part about the charity and what they did, one boy, who probably thought himself incredibly cool and edgy, loudly said, I don't know why anyone bothers to help those tards. We should just let them all die. And Mr. Cogburn transformed. As I said before, dude was tall, well over six feet, but his height never came across as imposing at all. Now, he loomed over that student's desk like the freaking angel of death. He seemed to physically radiate pure rage. I swear to all that's holy, you could feel his outrage coming off of him in waves. Even though he was focused solely on the one boy, students halfway across the room sank down in their chairs in pure terror, trying to disappear under their desks. I know, because I was one of them. We couldn't even look at him. Not out of the usual crap, he's mad, don't make eye contact instinct most people have, but more like it was a form of physical protection. He was a burning sun of anger, and if we looked directly at that sun, it would blind us. He spoke very, very quietly to the boy for about a minute. I didn't make out what he said. Then he led the kid out of the room and shut the door. About a quarter of the class started crying as soon as he left. After a while, the other math teacher came in and taught for the rest of the period. What we all found out later, and which none of us, including that boy, had known, was that Mr. Cogburn's daughter, who he spoke about to us frequently enough, was not his only child. He and his wife had also had a son, a son that was born extremely physically disabled, and who had died at a very young age from health complications arising from those disabilities. When he took that student out of the room, I think we all thought that he was going to kill him. He actually just took him down to the principal and explained what the kid had said, and the kid was suspended for a day. Mr. Cogburn also took the rest of the day off. So that was the biggest meltdown I have ever seen from a teacher, and it was sort of the inverse of a normal meltdown. When he was shouting, gesticulating wildly, and hitting our desks with yardsticks, we loved the guy and feared nothing. But that day when he got so quiet, we felt mortal effing terror.